right, for Geek News, ladies and gentlemen, dun, 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 dun. what you see? I gotta get my glasses. Hang on. All right, I got my glasses. Go ahead. All right. Where's All right. Call Where's of Duty. Yeah. Call of Duty Modern Warfare gives tank rewards. Literally. The rebooted FPS is going to be giving rewards for long kill streaks, including juggernaut assault gear and an actual tank with 50 cal MG and Willie Pete, which blinds enemies while burning them. The multiplayer premiere will air on Thursday, August 1st on Twitch. Classic multiplayer is making a comeback, but with a new 2v2 gunfight mode with tiny maps and rules that change every 40 seconds. The game is due out on October 25th. <clears throat> yeah, long kill streaks get you a tank now in Call of Duty. No, you said Willie Pete. Yeah, with Willie. That's all Pete. I needed to hear. Willie, Willie Pete. Willie's a good friend of mine. Willie's a good friend of yours. All right, here we go, and this is for the uh, Red Sonja movie. Jill Soloway, Red Sonja director, compares character to Dark Knight. Now. Originally, the director for this film was to be Brian Singer. However, due to allegations of sexual assault and misconduct, he was dropped from the project. The creator of Transparent, Jill Soloway, I've never heard of either one of these people, was picked to sit in the director's chair to replace him. When asked about the character, Jill had the following statement. I can really have so much fun with Red Sonja. i got to make sure you guys can see this. Okay, good. I see her a little bit more like the first kind of bad girl superhero, sort of like Batman of the Dark Knight of the Dark Knight. Now you can tell she doesn't read comic books. This is a direct copy of a quote. Or Deadpool, you know? The world is changing so much right now for superheroes that I just really look forward to not only go, uh, going to the edge of what I've ever written and directed before, but to the edge of the genre as well. Mr. the Ripper. Richdale brand designer medications. Side effects not included. <laughs> <clears throat> Red Sonja got her start in 1973 with Marvel Comics, but now calls Dynamite Comics her home. The inspiration for her character came from Red Sonja Rogatino from the short story The Shadow of the Vulture, which was penned by Robert E. Howard in 1934. Since her beginning, her backstory has changed only once to update it. She no longer was raped by mercenaries after they killed her family, and she was unable to defend herself. She no longer received her powers uh, from the goddess uh, Scathach, Scathach, with a vow only to sleep with men who best her in combat. The new origin story for the character has her luring the men who killed her family into a forest for her to kill them one at a time, and learns her fighting skills when she's made to fight in gladiatorial combat. There's no goddess imbued gifts. The second story is the one people speculate Holloway will go with. When questioned about her approach, she had this to say. And it's, it's kind of, what well, she had to say is kind of weird in my opinion, but I'm going to read it anyway. I've always talked about myself as doing work that attempts to heal the divided feminine in our culture. The idea women get chopped up in wife or other woman or good girl, bad girl, or Charlie's Angels, or all the women on Sex and the City, and that this idea of the divided feminine means that women get like a small slice to be. Yeah, her English is horrible. All my work is really about humans searching for some divine feminine, asking these questions about God and looking for meaning. So for me to transfer that into the world of Red Sonja felt incredibly natural because Red Sonja is a very different kind of superhero. She's not really typical. There's no premiere date for the movie as of yet. Yeah, <laughs> Unchained, they ruined it, Lasaria. Oh God, Neil, damn it, I was about to type, oh God, you beat me to it. Yeah, I just, that whole first sentence, I'm looking at it like either she didn't understand what she was saying or she just, her English just sucks. Because that whole sentence to me makes no fucking sense. <laughs> well, sorry, I, I now am not excited. <laughs> the thing, yeah. Yeah, this is. Yeah, they kind of, they kind of blew up when they redid the origin. Because classically, the origin of Red Sonja is she was gifted her abilities by a goddess. Yeah, by that. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, I, I mentioned that, and that um, I mean, the only vow the uh, she with a vow only to sleep with men who best her in combat in order to keep her powers. 
because they they went through yeah. both origin stories. I just kind of condensed them. But the new origin story for me doesn't make any sense. You can tell the difference in writers because to me it is um, characters luring the men who killed her family into a forest for her to kill them one at a time. Okay, this would hint. That she has some kind of fighting skills, but then it goes on to say that she learned her fighter skills when she's made to fight in gladiatorial combat. And they mentioned that she was in prison for something. So, I'm like, okay, so she kind of knew how to fight to lure them into the forest? Or was she lucky enough to kill all of them when she lured them into the forest? It's like, you've got a plot hole in the origin story already. Uh, she lured them into the forest, uh, the other way, she's going to lure them into the forest, you know, big bad fighters into the forest, people that kill, mm-hmm. they, they, can, they can, you know, see trouble coming and, and let you really, really wily and everything, is sex. Yeah. Uh, Lasari, if her English is that poor, I don't want to see her screenwriting. <laughs> Uh, Unchained. I first got into Red Sonia when I read a novel. See, I haven't read that comic book, so everything that I say, I'm just seeing from, you know, the the first impressions of what I'm getting to from get these it, articles that I find. To to, re- to really get into Red Sonia and to be well versed in the type of writing style that it was and everything, because it was running real close with the old Conan. Series. Yeah, they said they did mention the Conan series. Okay, next one. I'm kind of excited and then kind of reticent. This is uh, Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game Delay. Fantasy Flight and publisher Asmodee Digital have pushed back the release date on the Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game to August 29th for all platforms from its original release on August 8th. There was no reason given. The game features heroes and villains from the beloved books in a single player and cooperative multiplayer option. You can have up to three heroes in a party to compete to complete quests and fully customize your deck. Sounds interesting. Seeing how Magic the Gathering and other card games I've played was only is only like you. Mm-hmm. Playing cooperative multiplayer in a card game sounds really, really interesting. Oh, you get you get a couple of people with multiple decks that all work in conjunction for it with each other and everything and you can really make a mess. Yeah. It can be really fun. That sounds fun, though. It does. It does sound fun. It does. It didn't mention anything, Lasaria, about the. Let me see here. <clears throat> uh, well, it does mention single player or with a friend. So I'm assuming if you do single player, you'll have. Um, you know, you can do the versus thing, but they're they're being very vague with it. I'm gonna. I'll put the. Uh, link to the article in the chat because they're being very vague very very vague and let me see well they don't want they don't want to put too much they're not going to put too much information out there they want people to get into it and try it yeah okay here's the thing that got got you to hate me this morning but you know i must report i I must report these things 47 goes to siberia in the latest dlc in the newest expansion for the franchise, 47 operates in negative 47 degrees Celsius, or negative 52.6 degrees Fahrenheit, as he, or you rather, are sent to a Siberian prison to do a little wet work on a crooked overseer. As a sniper assassin, you will be at a safe distance, but that doesn't mean you won't be able to wreak a little havoc along the way. You get to distract noisy guards and have fun with flammable barrels. The DLC hits steam on July 30th, for expansion pass holders. To find it, use the tags DLC, IO, Interactive, and Hitman 2. I will copy and paste these tags in the chat. Somebody needs to buy me the entire version of Hitman 2. <laughs> I don't care who. Somebody better do it. You're I want the entire I, I want the entire version so that way I can go buy the DLC now. Damn it. Yep. All right. I think I need to spend money on. You're seeing that it's correctly. It's not my fault. I just report the fault. news. You, see, that's the problem right <laughs> there. You reported it. You Dead, told me. Deadpool and Blade to head phase five. Five years yeah. ago, Ryan Reynolds posted the post on Instagram, which led to Deadpool debuting on the big screen. Many people became nervous when the MCU called Disney home. Their fear? 
Will the next Deadpool movie not be rated R? With both Blade and the Merc with a mouth and the hands of Feige, the answer is yes, according to Disney CEO Bob Iger. They will head up a new, more mature brand, which will be apart from Disney and Marvel. 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 <laughs> Feige has stated there will be a new team of Avengers for the movie, and many are wondering if this would include Deadpool. Phase 4 will be ending with Thor 4 on November 5th, 2021. This could mean Phase 5 would be starting in 2022. So yes, even though they're with Disney, Deadpool and Blade will still be rated R. Yay! Yeah. Maybe because, yeah, no, you can't, you know... PG. Ryan Reynolds funded most of Deadpool, uh, you know, he's the one that drummed up all of that. That's his yeah. baby. Yeah. He's not going to, uh, he will fight. He will, he'll tell him to kiss his ass. Yeah, he I, really I will. Yeah, I agree, Lasaria. I, I did, I don't like who they cast for the reboot for the Blade series, because that's, no. Apex Legends announces preseason invitational. Uh, Mitch. Have you noticed that they don't mention Brie Larson in these releases? I have noticed. <clears throat> I have noticed. <clears throat> Electronic Arts is taking Apex Legends to a new level. It is striving to make the game a top-tier eSport with a preseason invitational. It will take place over oh, three God. days. Yeah. It will take place over three days and have 80 teams fighting for a piece of a $500,000 prize pool. The tournament will be double elimination based on performance. Teams will either... Uh, keep going in their wow. teams will either keep going in their starting bracket, be bumped down to a lower tier, or be eliminated completely. The remaining twenty teams will get prizes prizes ranging from four thousand eight hundred dollars to one hundred and five thousand dollars. The preseason invitational will be September thirteenth to the fifteenth in Krakow, Poland. This is an invite only event. If you're interested, email Apex Legends preseason at ea.com with your origin ID for a chance to take part. Oh, I think they're making a mistake. I think they are too. Uh, let me see. Brie Larson is in GG3. Plus, it seems that Captain Marvel Blu ray sales are tanking. <clears throat> yes, but okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe her last major appearance. The problem with. The thing is, and I'm, I'm going to say this. I think I said this once already. My hair is all screwed up, but, you know, whatever. i got to take a shower and wash it, so whatever. <laughs> okay, see, the thing is, you have, le there's less and less mentions of Brie Larson in Captain Marvel, okay? So my question is, are they keeping it hush-hush after what happened with the shoehorning release of the movie in order to roll out a Captain Marvel 2 and possibly a third movie? Because remember, the first movie was steeped in all sorts of controversy with rumors and unsubstantiated reports of Disney buying entire front row seats in order to pad their numbers at, uh, at the box office. Okay. Now I say unsubstantiated because I myself didn't do any digging to substantiate these things. I know other people did. Okay. So, um, they're hush hush because there were mixed reviews. Remember, Rotten Tomatoes was deleting all sorts of bullcrap, which should have told everybody when it comes to movies, don't trust Rotten Tomatoes. I use Metacritic. I've never used Rotten Tomatoes. I use Metacritic. You know, everybody bitches about Rotten Tomatoes. Well, how about this? This is my philosophy. If you don't like using a website and all you do when you use the website is bitch about said website, how about stop using the website? Saves a lot of bitching, don't it? I mean, they've already been proved to, you know, inflate numbers or decrease numbers or whatever, depending on the movies. Now, you have Little Miss Brie Larson and Captain Marvel who have been protected by everything because... When you say anything disparaging about Brie Larson or Captain Marvel, you have all the fandom, and I say this with air quotes, coming to her rescue, white knighting, shield maintaining, whatever you want to call it. Okay? Now they have the last Thor movie coming out with Jane Foster being Lady Thor. The director for Lady Thor is already on social media correcting everybody. And just mention her name and it freezes the stream. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, 
the director for Lady Thor is already on social media correcting everybody and telling everybody it's not Lady Thor, it's Thor. So, happened on her name again, I'm not going to say it again. So, here is my prediction about Jane Foster's Thor. I think she is going to be the second most protected MCU character in the universe and in this MCU franchise. Because if the director is already coming out correcting people on what Jane Foster is called, it can only get worse. Because we already know what happens with damage control. We've seen the damage control go horribly awry with, um, <clears throat> with uh, Ghostbusters 2016. We saw it go awry with Captain Bitchface. <clears throat> See if that freezes the screen when I say it that way. Uh, we've seen it go awry with the start with the new with Star Wars, um, you know the the Force chokes and the Last Mary Sue. When you know any kind of constructive <laughs> retard, Captain retard, any kind of constructive criticism from the original fandom, and what I mean by the original original fandom for MCU, is the comic book readers, the comic book aficionados, the people I consider the gatekeepers of anything Marvel because they've read these comic books. They know more about these characters than most of us. So, <clears throat> if they don't like these movies, they're gonna tell people not to see the movies. They're gonna critique the movies because they're going to compare the movies to the comic books, to some degree. And if they don't feel that the movies are doing the canon any justice, they're going to say so, but these are the people being called every buzzword in the book. They did it with Captain Bitchface. They're going to do it, mark my words, they're going to do it with Jane Foster and Lady Thorpe.